Hello, dear classmates. Welcome to the VSI testing class. In this chapter, we are going to start an interesting new topic: logic built-in self-test, or BIST. This is our cross row map. From this row map, we can see that built-in self-test is one of the important concepts in the design topics. With the concept of built-in self-test, we can then move on to test compression and the memory testing. So both ADA engineers and the design engineers have to know the concept of built-in self-test. Here is our motivating problem. Suppose that you have already learned a lot about test pattern generation, and you know how to generate very good quality test patterns. However, your manager still complains that tester is too expensive. So, can we design a circuit that can test the chip itself? So that our chip becomes smarter. In this way, we can use a relatively cheaper tester to test this chip. So why am I learning this? Built-in self-test can help us to first remove large, expensive tester. Second, test the chips at higher speed. Third. Test the chip online, so built-in stealth tests can do many things that we cannot do with traditional tester. Here is an interesting quotation from a former American president, Jimmy Carter. He said that testing oneself is best when done alone. This is a very Insightful quotation that is suitable for this chapter. Here is our chapter outline. There are two parts in the best lecture. In part one, we will first do a introduction of bits, and then we will introduce the test pattern generator. In part two, which is in the next chapter, we will introduce the output response analyzer, and we will introduce some basic BIST architecture. Then we will discuss problems and solution. Then we conclude the BIST chapter. So, what is built-in self-test? BIST is the capability of A piece of hardware or software to carry out explicit tests of itself. There are many levels of BIST. For example, in the system level self-test for a large mainframe computer, such as this IBM Blue Gene system, which is supposed to be very reliable. So this system should be able to test itself. This is what we call system level self-test. In the second level, board level self-test, an electronic board like this one should be able to test itself, so that we can identify or even replace a defective board in a big system. And finally, chip level self test. A smart chip like this should be able to test itself. This is the focus of this lecture. Chip level built-in self test can be classified according to different criteria. For example, we can classify. Based based on the time of testing, we can have online BIST, which performs online self-testing while the chip is in raw mode operation. For example, in our computer memory chips, 
they perform online error detection and correction to protect our RAM in our computer system. This is online beast. On the other hand, we also have offline beast, which means that we perform chip self-testing while the chip is not in normal operation. This offline beast is the focus of this talk. We can also classify bits based on the circuit under test. For example, in a large system on chip, SOC, we can have logic cores as well as memory cores. If we want to test the logic cores, we will need logic bits. If we want to test the memory cores, we could have memory based. This slide shows a general architecture for chip level built-in self-test. In this architecture, we have three major components. The BIST controller, test pattern generator, or TPG, and the output response analyzer, which is ORA. We have three I.O. pins. One input pin is start bits. The other two pins are output pins, which is bits done and pass fail. When we input a start bits signal, the bits controller will control the test pattern generator to generate test patterns to this circuit under test and uh, the output response analyzer will observe the output of the circuit under test and uh, compare them with expected good outputs. The result will be Return to the bit controller. Once the bit is done, the bit done signal will be asserted and the result of the test is a pass or fail signal. So why do we need bits? There are many unique advantages of bits. First, with bits we can save external ATE cost because we will need smaller test pattern storage if we have BIST. Also, we require fewer DFT pins with BIST. We can use slower speed tester with BIST. Second, we can improve IC quality. With BIST, we can test the chip at a higher speed than an external ATE. The third reason is that we can have easier integration of tests. For example, in a big SOC system on chip system, we have many intellectual property cores which are purchased from other designers. So the integrator actually does not know the circuit inside this IP course. So how can we test this IP course? If the IP course come with this circuitry, it will be much easier for the SOC integrator. The fourth reason is easier test access. In a big system on chip system, there are many internal embedded memories that actually does not have any access to the outside world. So if we want to test this embedded memory, it's better that we have BIST. The final reason is that BIST allow us to test the chip online. This can ensure the reliability. In summary, this has many unique advantages that traditional ATE cannot provide. 
This slide shows an example of test calls with and without beast. Suppose the circuit under test is a 1 GHz microprocessor with 1000 pins. If we test without beast, then we would require 1 GHz ATE, which is $3,000 per pin. If we want to purchase this ATE, we will need 3,000 by 1,000, which is 3 million US dollar. This is a huge initial capital cost. However, if we test the chip with BIST, we can use a cheaper ATE like 20 MHz ATE and the cost may be just $400 per pin. Overall, we need only 400,000 US dollars. This simple ATE just tests the I.O. connection and it provides uh, comments and read out the BIST results. From this example, we can see that BIST can reduce ATE costs significantly. However, there are still some problems of BIST. First, BIST is not free. It requires area overhead. It could cause yield loss. Second, BIST can cause performance degradation because of the extra hardware inserted into our original circuit. Third, BIST require extra design effort. We will need test point insertion, BIST insertion, and uh, eventually we would like to verify the design is the same after BIST insertion. Fourth, this lacks information for debug and diagnosis. If we test the circuit and it fails the beast, it is hard to say which part is faulty. We will need to bypass the beast circuitry when we perform diagnosis. And finally, the length of this test can be long but the full coverage may not be as good as traditional ATPG patterns. This is because these patterns are usually random, which is not as good as ATPG patterns. So mixed solution that perform both BIST and the ATE is often performed in practice. In summary, this can solve many problems, but it cannot solve all the problems in testing. Now we have a short quiz for you. Which of the following is not true for BIST? A. BIST requires test call because of good fault coverage. B. BIST reduces DFT pin requirement. C. BIS improve test quality because the test speed is higher than ATE. Have you got it? Yes, the sensor is A. BIS patterns are usually poor in quality than traditional ATPG patterns. Now we have learned the advantage of BIS, so we will start to introduce test pattern generator. In this video, we will first introduce a deterministic test pattern generator. So how can we generate test patterns on chip? A simple idea is that we can use ROM as our test pattern generation on chip. We can store test patterns in the read-only memory. However, this solution is very expensive for chip level based. This solution may be doable for system level based. For example, we can store a self-test program in the BIOS basic input-output system in our PC. So when we start our PC, 
it will run a self test from BIOS. A second idea is that we can use a algorithmic test pattern generator as TPG. The algorithmic test pattern generator can generate test patterns based on certain mathematical rule or algorithm. This is suitable for testing regular structures such as memory or FPGA. However, this might not be very useful for random logic. So both these two solutions are not good enough for logic bits. We can also use shift counters as test pattern generator. A shift counter can generate regular test sequence such as a working sequence to test the wires or interconnects. This figure shows a very simple working sequence generated by a shift counter. Every cycle, this one is shifted to the right by one bit. So after eight cycles, we can walk across each line so that we can detect bridging fault between lines. Using this shift counter as test pattern generator, we can easily test the interconnect wires in linear time. However, this structure is too regular and it is not useful for random logic. It, finally, we can use a binary counter as test pattern generator. For example, if we have n bit of input, we can use an n stage binary counter as TPG. If it is an up counter, it can generate test pattern from 0 all the way up to 2 to the nth minus 1. Or if it is a down counter, we can count from 2 to the nth minus 1 to 0. The advantage of this binary counter is that the design is very simple and it is an exhaustive test. The fault coverage is very high. However, the disadvantage is that, of course, exhaustive testing is very long. The test length is 2 to the power of n. There is no randomness. It's a deterministic pattern sequence. For example, if we have n equal to 8 inputs for this CUT to generate a 1 at the most significant bit, we will need 2 to the power of n minus 1, which is 2 to the power of 7 cycles to generate a 1 at the left most bit. This is a long time if n is very large. So we still need a random counter that can generate random test patterns for logic based. In summary, in this video, we have done a brief introduction of logic based. A logic based has three major components, TPG, which generate test patterns, ORA, which analyze output responses, and the controller. The advantages of based are reduction of DFT pins and the reduction of tester cost, and it enables online testing. However, the disadvantages of BIST are area overhead, performance degradation, and the lower fall coverage. In this video, we also introduce some simple test pattern generator, ROM-based, algorithm-based, counter-based TPG, 
are typically not good enough for testing logic. So in the next video, we will introduce two better test pattern generators. Thank you for watching.